Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your hosts, sports journalist David Todd, and from SteelersDepot.com, Dave Bryan. Just a couple of Daves, chilling, talking Steelers. Now, here's Dave and Dave. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Dave. He's Dave Bryan of SteelersDepot.com, the place to get your latest and greatest Steelers information. And I'm David Todd. It's Season 9, Episode 44. And Dave, four is the magic number as the Steelers win their fourth in a row, 5-2-1. and one. Another impressive showing. Of course, not perfect. Rarely do we have the perfect NFL game. But the Steelers did a lot of things well. I felt like they dominated the Ravens. And now, uh, not only have they put themselves in charge of the AFC North, they have maybe really put the dagger in the Ravens and maybe in John Harbaugh's tenure as coach of the Ravens. Five, two, and one, just like you and I called it at the uh, at the beginning <laughs> of, the, of the season, uh, in order, uh, halfway point, uh, with uh, a tie against the uh, the Browns. Uh, and, you know, and and losses to good lord uh, to the to the Chiefs and 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 the Ravens there. Uh, look. Uh, you know, if I would have told everybody listening to this podcast, I could promise them that the Steelers be five, two, and one at the halfway point and have a three, one, and one division record. You probably take it. You yeah. probably take it. You're probably hoping for six and two. I think you know we were talking six and two, potentially seven and one, and certainly uh, this isn't that. But when you you know, as your point being made, as you start one, two, and one, five, two, and one, do your damn right signing up for that. <laughs> Seems a long time ago from the uh, lost the locker room days and uh, uh, everything that goes on. Look, you know, yeah, that's why you just got to be kind of patient at times and and uh, know kind of know what what uh, uh, what the team has in the locker room there and, and 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 look at the schedule and go from there. You know, the game against the Ravens yesterday, Sunday, uh, kind of went. Like I thought and hoped it would, uh, right, right from the get go there. But uh, you know, back to your point about the Ravens. You know, I, I I got a little pushback during the week saying that you know that that this wasn't. I mean, this this probably wasn't a as must uh, as much of a must win game for the Ravens as it was the Steelers. And and I truly believe that it, it was uh, that for the Ravens because here they are now at four and five. They have lost. Boy, how many in a row have they lost now? Three? Three of their last... Uh, four, uh, four or five and three in a row. Uh, yeah. two, two in a row. I guess that the ten, Tennessee game was a couple weeks ago. But, uh, but I mean... I, well, I mean, no, no. Three of their... Four of their last five. Uh, they lost yeah. to the Saints, the Panthers, and, of course, the Steelers. They beat Tennessee before that and then lost to the Browns be- uh, before that. So, you know, that here- was the killer. That was the killer. That lost to the Browns. And, you know, the Steelers tied them. They, they, the Ravens lost to them. That's the killer game for them. Yeah, and in division now, they are one in three. And what's the old saying go? You better win. If you if you gonna do anything, you better win in your division. And now uh, they have two games left in division, and really one of them uh, is going to come out of their bye week against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that they already you know lost to earlier in the season, 34-23. They and then they and well, like we've talked, you know they've got a kind of a tough road here. You know Cincinnati, then they kind of get a gimme in the Oakland Raiders uh, after that. Then they get Atlanta, Kansas City, Tampa Bay, and the Chargers. Bang, 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 right in a row there. So you would think in order to make a wild card uh, spot, they at least need nine wins, right? Yep. At, at the very Yeah, yeah they got to go five and two, and they're on the road, as you pointed out, with Kansas City, uh, Atlanta, and, and you know, the, the Chargers. That's, that's probably three losses right there. So if they don't win, if they don't win the Cincinnati game coming out of the bye, I, I think for sure their season's over. They're done. They they will be done because eight and eight's not going to get it done. And eight and eight <laughs> might yeah, that would be a stretch from four and six with those road games. And, and that might be enough to do to to do Harbaugh in. Now I know there's a lot of people speculating that that Harbaugh is going to be fired during this bye week. I don't see it. I mean, I think it'd be, I, honestly, I think I think John Harbaugh will have a job next year if he gets fired in a in a second. I think. 
Look, I, I, well, let's get into the game, and, and you know this will all flush itself out. So, Dave, on the on the on the list of the Steelers' eight games they've played this year, was this their best overall performance or not? Uh, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Well, are you taking the Falcons game? Are you taking the Bengals game? Which game are you taking if you're not taking this one? I'm probably gonna take the Falcons game. I think. Yeah, they started slow in that game, but they played awfully well and really dominated. I, you know, this is a game. Uh, you know, it was on the road, so there's there's a lot to be said for that in Baltimore, a division game. So the magnitude of the game, the, you know, this one obviously more significant. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. To me, it's a bit of a toss up. I think they did a lot of things well in this game, but obviously, you're coming down to you know a minute to go in the game, and you have a potential to have a tie, you know, be tied or or you know even lose the game. So it, it wasn't a laugher. Like uh, you know, I think the Cleveland game after that first quarter, they were they were stunningly good. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure I'd put this as their best win, but certainly a significant win and kind of I, I think I think the thing that I that if you're a Steeler fan and, and watch this team a lot, I think the thing you have to be pleased about is you had things go right kind of all over the place. Now, again, never never discounting some of the mistakes that were made, and there were mistakes made, but did a lot of things well. We continue to see improvement in the defense. The offense continues to show the ability to move the ball. And, you know, this is a game where, look, they didn't they, – they never put the dagger in the game – but the, it was a comfortable game in the sense that you felt like the Steelers were in charge the whole way. Well, I think uh, well, you remember that you said uh, you didn't think the, they started fast enough. Fal- the Falcons game was the one when they scored the first two possessions. First two, right, right, uh, right, that, right, right down, and you know that that re- right. that that really sets a tone. Now the Bengals game was the one that they kind of uh, sputtered a little bit there. Uh, uh, you know, you know, they, 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 they did cash in some first half points there, but, uh, didn't, didn't right off the bat here. Now in this game against the Ravens, uh, yesterday, yeah, I mean, look there, there, and we'll get into this in a minute. How many, how many plays in the first half alone on both sides of the football were we circling there saying, I don't know about the, you know, so many things went, as you said, kind of the Steelers way there. I mean, Flacco misses a wide open Lamar Jackson uh, on, 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 on one of their first, what, two possessions. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. Didn't they leave? They, what, they left uh, eight points on, on the table in the first, first half, no doubt. The Crabtree one and, the, and, the, and that one. Uh, what do you mean on the on the Crabtree one? Oh, you mean uh, uh, who, who who tipped that? Did Chicklow tip that? Maybe I, I mean I don't know if it was just pressure or it was a tip, but certainly the ball didn't get out of Flacco's hand like he would have liked, and and Crabtree kind of st- stumbled along the goal line. But you know, th- th- let's be clear that the Raven. You know, we talk about when the Steelers don't do things perfectly, and and that sticks in people's craw for you know, the rest of the week. But the Ravens certainly left plays on the table. Well, you know, they missed the uh, – he missed a wide open <laughs> – that, that looked like when you let your little brother or whatnot play with you, and, and no matter how open your little brother gets, you're not going to throw the football to him uh, when you play in some of them street football games. Lamar Jackson was wide open uh, over there on the right side of the field, and, and Flacco just – like he didn't even exist – uh, on, on that play and instead threw uh, into the back of the end zone. So, you know, the big thing I think to come out of, of really the first, you know, half was the the Ravens were 0-2 in the red zone. The Steelers were 2-0 and in the red zone. And they had gotten James Conner uh, off to a quicker start than they have in in other games this season. Not only running the football with, but uh, with catching the football as well too. So when you throw all that into there, and then kind of the third down stats uh, come halftime. To me, that was the big difference. And, and boy, we could go through like like I said and circle quite a few plays uh, in this game. Uh, ben avoided. A, you know, there were a couple balls that probably should have been picked off by the Ravens. 
uh, in this game, whether they be tipped or bad decisions. You know, Ben kind of forced that one to, who was it, Jesse or Vance McDonald uh, down on one of those red zone drives, got away with it. A couple of them got tipped in the game as well, too. Uh, that's going to happen. Some teams are going to make plays and some teams don't. You know, that, that's the difference in, in some of these games. But the, the Steelers made the most of their opportunities. And I think, like I said, that was the most kind of glaring thing uh, coming out of the first half of that game was 2-0 and Steelers in the red zone, 0-2 Ravens in the red zone. Yep, no no doubt. And that put them in, you know, solid position at halftime, uh, you know, going into that second half. And, and again, you know, you, you mentioned James Conner getting – getting off to a, a really a great start. Uh, you know, the Steelers didn't come away with points on that opening drive, but James Conner touches the ball, I think, three times for, you know, 38 yards or something like that, right right out of the shoot, the first three plays. And then the Steelers, Dave, a bit curiously, you know, they have the third and 11 um, after the two plays where, where you know, they, they get stopped. Uh, third and 11, they run James Conner for four or five yards, and then they have Ben Puck. And obviously, this is one of those things where it is doctor second guess. Everybody, you know, will look at this and say, OK, well, uh, they understand why you're not trying a 56 yard field goal. And you maybe you understand early in the opening drive of the game where you maybe don't want to try to, to go for it on fourth and six and fourth and seven. But the question is then, obviously, uh, why, why do you get your QB back there punting? And, and doing that when he hasn't done it in a bunch of years and he's only done it, I think, six times in his career? I'll take a slightly different tact on this one. Uh, I realize this didn't work out perfectly for the Steelers, but I think it's because Eric Weddle made a great play, and he didn't he didn't you know he didn't stay in and play safety the way you would normally in the defense. He went back and played punt return guy, caught the ball and returned it 15 yards on a punt. By the way, that the Steelers certainly would have downed inside the 10 yard line. I mean, Ben hit it just the way you would like him to do it in practice, not hitting to hit a tr- high boomer, but he got it off and he got it down toward the corner and. And, uh, you know, I think Weddle caught it around the 11. Uh, it did not work the way the Steelers wanted. But I don't think it was actually, and I realize I am going to be in the vast majority on this one. I do not think it was a bad choice. I don't know where to find one of them vast majorities at, but uh, uh, never have seen one. But uh, I'll tell you this. I, I didn't like the sequence. Uh, James, if you're going to run on third and 10, I'm fine with running on third and 10 in, in, in you know at the Baltimore 42. Yeah, I'm going to be clear about one thing. I didn't love the Connor play call. So I'm not running a play call to set up Ben punting. So I didn't like that. I'm just talking about the Ben trying to trick them a little bit with the punt. You know, if you're going to run on, 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 on third and ten at that portion of the field, then damn it, go for it on fourth and six or whatever. <laughs> you know, just just go for it. I mean, uh, that to me, you're, you're, you're kind of signaling that's two down, you know, that, that's two down territory by waving a white flag there on third and ten. Uh, that's my view on it there. Now, uh, the whole punt thing. I mean, yeah, there's some results bias that, that creeps in there because of the net and all like that. But uh, how, how many years has Eric Weddle been in the, in, in the league? And, and does Baltimore have uh, uh, tape archives there in, in their facility? I mean, how we, we knew what was going to happen as soon as Ben started taking a couple of steps back. So, you know, I'm sure Eric Weddle did too, and good on him. Uh, so, yeah, it is kind of results bias there, but I mean, I, to me, it goes back to this, uh, the heck with a fourth down punt by Ben, if you're going to go for, if you're going to run on third and 10, damn it, throw for the first down on fourth down, run your play. Yeah. yeah now let, let's, uh, the Steelers obviously, uh, chose to defer and kicked off to open the game. And we see, you know, a couple, a couple plays, you know, up the gut on the Steelers, um, and, but this, you know, right into right into Steeler territory. Uh, did you think when the Steelers were able to, you know, first you had the offside and Flacco gets hit by uh, Cam to its offside, and then you have uh, Flacco on what to me certainly looked like what should have been called intentional grounding on the next play when Cam gets him, and then you have the following play. And uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what's it. Uh, there's some decent pressure, and Flacco throws it away uh, to Crabtree on the left side. Did you assume at that time 
that we were going to be looking at six to eight Steeler sacks and, and uh, Flacco was going to be a beat up dude with the way they were able to get after him toward the end of that first drive. Yeah. My main concern coming out of that first drive is, man, they're, they're, they're able to run the ball a little bit. And, and plus they, uh, they, they, they had already busted an explosive play to, uh, to, uh, to Andrews on a night. And look, that was a nicely designed rub, uh, kind of a rub play on 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 Morgan Burnett there out of the slot to uh, to to get Andrews open. But my biggest concern was was the run. I I think kind of at, at at that point uh, at least early there. Or no, I'm thinking of the second drive because Edwards uh, had second drive he gouged him up the middle. Right, right. I, I'm thinking of uh, the first drive that great pass over Burnett. That was that the one. Or was that also the second drive? I mean, that was a really you know to more to more uh, to more. They hit. Uh, yeah, that was the second. That was the second drive. I'm getting my drive. You you went backwards in in, in the sequence here. But uh, uh, okay, yeah, the the pressure early. Yeah, I thought maybe. Look, I mean, they had two backup tackles in this game. Talking about the Ravens, you know, uh, we expected. <laughs> everybody should have expected the Steelers to be able to get good pressure on Flacco in this game for that reason alone. Uh, uh, and plus, Alex Lewis, their their left guard was banged up. Uh, you know, on, on top of it. So yeah, I, I thought maybe the the game was going to follow suit that way, kind of what we saw uh, in, in that first possession there for Baltimore. Now, when you get into the second possession, that's that's where I was kind of stuck in uh, there. I was getting kind of worried there because you get uh, even though it was a nice pass and a nice catch, kind of what looked like maybe a Tampa two coverage. We we'll have to see what the uh, all twenty two says with uh, Morgan Burnett having to carry the tight end up the seam uh, on that one, and then they had a couple of nice runs. I was starting to get worried at that point but you know obviously the uh the uh the, the uh, defense stopped them uh on 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 third and five at the what uh that was the one that was the drive where Flacco missed Lamar Jackson and threw into the end zone uh there so you get to stop there they seem to settle of course the Steelers t- took the ball back down the field and scored and and were up uh up seven to what three at that point and you know, from from there on out, they started to settle down a little bit defensively. Yeah, I, you know, I, when when we look at this game defensively, you say, you know, we of course Mike Hilton again, a couple huge plays. I mean, the 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 if he makes the play on Andrews in the end zone to knock away a touchdown, a would be touchdown where he goes up and he actually has both hands on that ball. He almost picked it, um, which on the replay was unbelievable that he's up there doing that. And then the open field tackle on Lamar Jackson on the other side of the field where it's, you know, kind of he and Jackson with four yards to go until the end zone. And we saw in that game what Antonio Brown did to a a defensive back with four yards to go into the end zone uh, where the guy didn't even get a finger on him. uh, And Mike Hilton made an open field tackle. So, yeah, I mean, we talked about two plays where uh, where the, the Ravens maybe left points on the field. And then, you know, those are two plays where, you know, Mike Hilton himself maybe saved, uh, you know, potential touchdowns um, uh, from, from, you know, from the, the Ravens from scoring. Uh, but I thought, you know, when, but when you think about the effort overall defensively and who stood out, I mean, other than some plays by Hilton, I'm not sure in this game, whereas I, th- I think in the Cleveland game, we're, we're listing, you know, name after name of guys. I'm not sure in this game you look and say, well, you know, this player had an outstanding game because it, it doesn't jump out to me as to, you know, maybe Sean Davis – Maybe we say Sean Davis and Mike Hilton were the two guys who stood out defensively. But I don't think, you know, even though I thought the defense played fine, I don't think any individuals uh, stood out as having outstanding performances. Yeah, and that's fair. I mean, look, you already highlighted Hilton. I mean, a couple of nice plays in there. Four total combined tackles. I think he had two tackles for lost in the game. Uh, and, and, of course, the pass defense uh, that, that you just described. So it's him and then second. Yeah, it is is Sean Davis, but however, comma, how many times do you want your free safety leading the team in tackles? With, right, with, no doubt. Uh, with, with eight. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice that he was there and doing it as, as opposed to not doing it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's something that you don't want to see in your stat sheet very often uh, with him. Uh, uh, leading the team in tackles. And make no mistake about it, you look at, you. hey, if you show me just the stat sheet on this game, David, and I saw nothing else, you know what I'm going to right away. I'm going to go look at the sacks. I'm going to go look at the explosive plays. I'm going to go look at the turnovers. And if I do all that, 
I'm going to tell you that the Ravens won that game because they were, I think, plus two uh, in 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 the in the uh, tots category in this game. So and, yeah. and the difference and the difference is going to be, you know, when you and obviously if I had to swing in and tell you to go look at something else, it'd be the third and fourth down conversions. Steelers go ten of sixteen. This is basically kind of flipping it from the first matchup of these two teams. Steelers also one on one on fourth down. And big kudos to Mike Tomlin for actually going for it on that fourth down. Uh, I, I loved the aggressiveness there, and the Ravens go four for twelve on third down and zero for one on fourth down. So that swung it so that you know the Steelers ended up with seventy six plays versus the Ravens only fifty six plays, and time is time of possession again almost exactly flipped from the first matchup of these two teams. Thirty six and a half minutes for the Steelers. 23 and a half minutes for the Ravens. You know, and, and look, you, know, you can look at the penalties as well, too. And if I had any question about maybe whether or not the uh, the Ravens won that plus two Tox game, and for, for those of you just joining us, the Tox is the explosive plays of 20 yards or more and, you know, the turnovers and you find the differential of the two and 80% of the time a team that finishes with a plus two Tox rating in a game wins the game. Uh, so, you know, that, that, that's that in a nutshell. Now you could also, if I had any question about, well, uh, I'm going to cheat on David here. And I, and instead of just looking at the talk stat, I'm going to run down and look at the penalties real quick. And I see that the Steelers had eight for 103 while the Ravens had five for just 25. I'm going to slam the book close right there and say, absolutely. Uh, the, the, uh, the Ravens won that game, uh, regard, because I mean, how many times have we seen teams not, you know, win in all three of those categories there, uh, but, but not convert on third down and still win the game for, for whatever reason, turnover you know, or not turnovers, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, red zone stuff and everything that goes along with that. So yeah, you know, I thought they did a lot of things well in this game, the the thing that's still I think driving a lot of people crazy when it comes to uh, this defense here is where are the turnovers right uh, they have one they have one turnover in this four game in in in, in was it the four game winning streak or the three game uh, is it one in the last three that they have or one in the last four I think it's one in the last four that they have I don't think they had any turnovers uh, against Atlanta right. Do you remember? Uh, no, I can't think of any off the top of my head. They're, they've been certainly been limited. And look, it's a it's a league wide trend. Uh, I think that you know we've seen in the, with the short passing game and the higher completion percentage, you're not getting as many turnovers. People realize how detrimental they are. But you know, you'd like to shake one loose now and then. Okay, they did have one turnover in the in the Falcons game. Uh, none in the Bengals game. Uh, of course, they're off uh, week seven in the game against the Browns. They had the one turnover. That was Joe Hayden, right? Uh, the interception of Joe Hayden that, that, that uh, Joe Hayden had. Uh, what else is and then none, none yesterday, none so. yesterday. So I think two then, or was, uh, was the turnover. I'm trying to think of what the turnover in the Falcon. I'm, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden what the turnover in the Falcons game uh, was. Uh, they did not have an interception in that game. Uh, they did have uh, oh the the, the Matt Ryan uh, lost fumble in that game. Uh, on, 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 okay. Was that uh, all right? Well, anyway, the point is they're not getting a lot of turnovers. Right. Well, they have two, and one of them was a fumble. I, the right the reason I couldn't think I was thinking of interceptions. That's what I posted on Twitter last night. One interception in their last four games. You, you know, Mike Tomlin talked in this press conference last two, last uh, last Tuesday about how they got to start, you know, uh, getting these turnovers here, and, and and they're not doing it. That's one concern there, and the other concern, you know, that that I talked quite a bit about, I think, last week was the starting offensive. You know, field position still has not been great. And look, Ryan Switzer's doing what he can do. I get it, uh, but but this team still is not starting any drives. You know. Outside of their own 45, very much not enough, especially, you know, last number of games here. And that's got to change as well, too. You just cannot keep expecting your offense well, to go 65, 75 yards. 
I mean, we say it's got to change, but they just went four in a row in this sequence of only getting two turnovers and having tough field position, and that's a credit to kind of de- playing as a team, everything going right. And and credit, as you say, credit Ryan Switzer for getting this team started offensively because he took that kickoff out to the 39-yard line. And we, we've talked for years about how the Steelers don't get the ball out past the 30 on the kick return. And Switzer did that, and the Steelers went right down the field on that drive to take the lead, and they never trailed after that. So, yeah, that was an important aspect of that, and he's been an important aspect of that all, all season long. And, again, you know, as, as we evaluate – you know, the coach is, the coach is, and the general manager, you, you know, we, we point to, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, accurate uh, pointing to Artie Burns as a guy who has not kind of lived up to what you hope to for your first round pick. But the, the GM's job obviously is not just to have a first round pick and to go out and acquire Ryan Switzer for what he acquired him. Uh, after trading Martavis Bryant for a third round pick, I mean some other aspects that are will will go under the radar. No, understandably, first round picks more important than going and getting Ryan Switzer. Uh, but you know you add a guy like Ryan Switzer to the mix for at a very low cost, and that uh, that helps your team across the board. And he has certainly helped this team in the return game and a little bit in the offensive side as well. Before I forget, you just mentioned Artie Burns. No defensive snaps for Artie Burns. <laughs> yeah. Get- it was very interesting to listen to Mike Tomlin in the pregame on the Mike Tomlin show. Uh, he was asked about, uh, I, you know, I thought the questioning was very good this time by Bob Labriola. He was asked about, uh, you know, what, you know what, what was the situation with Artie Burns and, and how do you feel about punishing players? And he said, look, uh, I treat everybody fairly. I don't treat everybody the same. He said, if you fall into the web – you are if you fall into my web, you are you have subjected yourself to my discretion. And so he went on and talked about that. And he said and Labriola asked him, you know, do you do you find players? And he said, yes, I do. And he said, do you what do you consider more important, fines or playing time? He said, absolutely playing time. You can't buy playing time. These guys come out here. They love to play. No disrespect to money or, you know, the effort that it takes to get money. But these guys want to play football. And that's the more important thing. And then he, the last question he was asked is, how do you follow on with that? Uh, you know, do, do you have a doghouse? And he said, no, I don't have a doghouse. I got too many things to worry about. I'm, I'm not carrying around baggage. Uh, if I got a problem, I'd rather fire the guy. So a very, I thought it was an interesting sequence of questions. And I certainly expected uh, as, a result, as, as a result of that to see Artie Burns um, take some defensive snaps. But I did say two weeks ago, what I would have, and I didn't know that Artie had missed a walkthrough. I said I actually would sit Artie for the rest of the year, barring injury. I think he needs, you know, he needs a mental break and he needs to work on his technique. Now I'm not there at practice every day, and we've talked how these Steelers coaches do evaluate in practice. Um, and we had heard that Artie did have a good week before that Bengals game, but he didn't play. And we, you know, nobody's commented on whether he had a good week of practice last week, this past week. But obviously, not playing again and then having a game Thursday night. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see Artie. I think he'll continue to dress, but I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see Artie play any defensive snaps again this week. On a short week, it might make it kind of tough, right? You kind of want to oh. stick with, with what you know. Mike Tomlin might not have a doghouse. I'm not sure if I, if I totally believe that, but Mike Tomlin does have a kennel. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does kennel a few of them dogs every once in a while while he, while he has them fighting with the – the, the two bones or whatever, you know, uh, he, he does have one of those. Uh, ask Stephen, uh, ask Stephon Ridley if Mike Tomlin has a doghouse right now. Hey, that's a good point. You know, uh, poor, poor Stephon Ridley, uh, you know, uh, which was a tough fumble in that, that game against. Well, I, I guess maybe the difference there is uh, doghouse would be, you know, you, you broke a team rule. Uh, this or, or uh, the, no doghouse for breaking a team rule, but it, you're making a, a, an evaluation of performance. If you're fumbling the football, that's not a doghouse. That's somebody moved ahead of you on the depth chart. Did you just get me? Did you just fill my, my cup of coffee up when, when you fill my <laughs> fill my large glass of ice water? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, here, here you you know we talked about several. You know, we're jumping all over the place here, uh, obviously. But uh, let's uh, finish up on the defense. Anything else? Uh, in terms of, you know, obviously, uh, Stefan's st- uh, the sack came, got pressure. Uh, Stefan gets the sack at the end of the game. That was, you know, killed that last drive. You, you'd hope that drive was never going to be an issue, but that, that sack obviously made it a non issue. So good stuff there. Anything else in terms of 
Uh, the, how about the pass interference calls? What did you think of, you know, three for 68 or whatever it was? Did you think they were all legit? Do you know, do you feel like the, the do you feel like the, uh, look, you mentioned the penalties. For those who didn't know the numbers exactly, Steelers eight for 103 and three huge PI calls. Uh, the Ravens five for 25. What were your thoughts on that? Look, I mean, I, I understand the running joke yeah, with, the, with the Ravens over the years. Just uh, throw, you know, let's run the pass interference play. You know, uh, that, that kind of thing. But, you know, re, over the years, I guess, or I should say last couple of games, that we haven't seen that as much with those kind of calls going up up, up against the Steelers there uh, on, on pass interference. You could dissect them and you could probably say, yeah, ticky-tack maybe. But, but as a whole, uh, you know, is, is Trell Edmonds going to get that call as a rookie, you know? Uh, that uh, that that first one against him. Uh, I mean, you know the the thing on those the, those two, you you just you know Burnett as well. You just like to see guys get their head around. I realize why they don't at times. You don't want to kind of lose the receiver as you turn for the ball. That's why you'd rather be running side for side rather than chasing a receiver. Cody on his just didn't think it was necessary. Again, that was one of those. I felt like he had. He was in a position where he didn't have to do that. I thought all three – look, I, did I love the calls? Didn't love them, but you look at them, I think they were all legit calls. Yeah, I don't – you know, there's there's this thing that's a conspiracy, blah, 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 you know, whatever. You know, I, I – I, yeah, the Cody one was probably the most egregious, right? Uh, I mean, egregious meaning most glaring. Yeah, I think probably the most glaring when you grabbed him. Okay, and then obviously, I mean, you can make an argument on the on the other two, and I'd I'd listen to it, probably nod my head uh, a, a little bit, but I I wasn't I wasn't th- throw stuff at the TV mad, no. You know, you gotta you gotta try to get your head around. And look, I mean, I thought initially on that one to uh, Edmonds in the end zone, I thought maybe he was gonna get called there, but I, I thought the replay did a better job on that one, showing, you know, showing that it probably shouldn't have been on that one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they got a chunk. Uh, make no mistake about it. They had, you know, not only did they have their explosive plays, uh, talking about the Ravens, which they had how many of those? Uh, five of those, five explosive plays of 20 yards or more the Ravens had. And then you throw in the, uh, the, uh, the three pass interference calls on top of it. That's kind of a lot for a defense to have to overcome. And they did. And, you know, they did hold them to, you know, make, make no mistake about it. However you want to dissect this thing up. Uh, they did hold them to 16 points. And that's kind of that magic number that keep Butler 16, 17 points that Butler always talks about. And over the course of these last four games, uh, uh, opposing, you know, they, the, uh, they have, uh, the, the opposition has averaged 18 points a game and don't forget that, you know, the final touchdown against the, uh, against the Browns was kind of, yeah. you know, was kind of part garbage of it. No garbage, doubt. Garbage time. You know, was garbage time, but it is what it is. And, 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 and as you and I have talked recently, today's NFL, uh, when it comes to defenses, if you don't give up, I mean, if you don't, if you have less than 20 points scored against you, you've done something in, in today's NFL, and now they have done something approximately four times in a row. Now, uh, and we, boy, we still got a lot to talk about about this game, but you know, we 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 said, what are we going to learn about this Steelers defense? You know, in in their next, you know, after the Falcons game, I guess maybe it was. Uh, we said, what are we really going to learn about this, the Steelers' defense in their next three divisional games, uh, games that we kind of hope and thought they needed to win against, uh, obviously, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Baltimore. They did that. But what are we going to learn about the the, uh, the Steelers' defense, and what have we learned about the Steelers' defense, and what will we learn about the Steelers' defense against the Panthers on Thursday night? Where are you right now on this defense? Uh, they're an improving defense. I think they're, you know, you look at a, a game like last night's with uh, with Rodgers and Brady uh, and what they do, or you look at the game at four o'clock with what Goff and Breeze did. And I think when you're playing, uh, you know, you see what Phillip Rivers is doing every week. When you're playing the elite quarterbacks in this league, good God, you just try to keep them under 30 points. And your offense has to be able to match them point for point. 
Now, that's the elite quarterbacks. That might be five or six. I'm not sure. Uh, I, you know, where's Ben fall on that list? Well, we can debate it, but you know what some of these guys can do in this league. I don't think any defense can stop them. Some of these offenses are unstoppable. The Steelers have not played one of those offenses and you know what? They're going to play three or four of them in the second half of this season. So I think your point's well taken. Um, I think you, you, the Steelers are getting an opportunity to improve. They certainly played better against the Baltimore team this time than they did last time. And good God, who knows what, uh, Harbaugh's trying to do with Lamar Jackson because I think him being on the field really hurt their offense uh, in this game on Sunday. So uh, uh, improvement, but st- still, I, I don't want to take any defense and certainly not the Steelers defense against some of the QBs that are going to get a, a shot at him <clears throat> this coming week. Now, it'll be interesting to see Cam because I don't put Cam in that elite group of quarterbacks and I don't put Carolina in the, the elite group of offenses. But they took apart this Ravens defense, and they yesterday took apart a not very good Tampa defense, but did some things with you know receivers running the football, um, you know Greg Olson and McCaffrey having big games, Cam having a solid game. So it'll be uh, another, it'll be maybe the most stern challenge after you know a, a banged up Bengals team didn't have their weapons. Uh, the Ravens, you know, I don't think they're a great offensive team. So this might be the most stern t- challenge they've s- faced since the Falcons. Now. Let's just put it out there. The Falcons are a really good offensive team, and they've shown it just about every week of the season, um, but not as good on the road, uh, clearly, than at home. So so give them kudos for shutting down that Falcons offense. They'll get another chance at the the NFC South uh, on Thursday, uh, again, on their home field, a big advantage there. So wait a minute. You're telling me that uh, that, uh, uh, Andy Dalton, Baker Mayfield, and Joe Flacco are not elite quarterbacks? They didn't, they didn't make my elite list. No, you know, your, somebody else's elite list might be different. <laughs> okay, now, remember when we were talking the other on uh, Saturday or whatnot, we said, uh, uh, you know, boy, the narrative could go 18 different directions and probably be right after this game against the Ravens. Uh, because of, I mean, look, oh, it's just Joe Flacco. Boy, they banged up uh, uh, Ravens' offensive line. Uh, the Steelers are clicking right now. Uh, you know, so many different things. And then whatever you build, oh, they shouldn't have lost that game. How the heck did the Steelers lose that game? Oh, no, the Steelers won that game. They should have won that game. You know, the, the, so where where is the narrative on this Monday morning? Uh, to me, it's, they did what they were supposed to do. They beat they beat a Ravens team twenty three to sixteen and to finish off a three game on, a, on the road on the road as right. a dog as, as a dog a three game uh, you know a three game swing that they finished off like they were supposed to and I think it kind of ends right there. I, there should be no other superlatives on top of it. I don't think right now. And you talk about the Panthers. We'll of course get into this a little bit more on, on Wednesday when we, when we get into the finer details of breaking them down, but this is more what they're going to face in the Panthers and Cam Newton is more like week one against the Browns. It's kind of a Tyrod Taylor on steroids, right? You know, uh, a guy that can kill you with his legs, a guy that's tough to bring down, you know, like 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 Ben Roethlisberger, a guy that really has played good in Cam Newton so far. I think he's only thrown what four intercept, fifteen TDs, four interceptions uh, so far. A guy that uses his back, at, you know, the shorter passing game. North Tur- North Turner's done a hell of a job, right? Uh, 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 with- he's, done a, he's done a hell of a job. And the re- the Ringer had a good article. Uh, if you can check it out, I think it was November first about Carolina and their offense and you know what they're doing. Uh, it's it's a it's a good read if you want to get into some Carolina stuff this week. Um, about yeah, they 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 have they have uh, they've souped it up. All right, now uh, real quick, uh, uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about mybookie.ag, David, and uh, I'll come back and want to talk a little bit about circling some uh, some plays. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I didn't take a look at our our, uh, our numbers, but did you get after the man again? Uh, I I did personally, and I did in fantasy as well too. I have not looked. Uh, I, I obviously uh, not crazy enough to bet all. 13, 14 games every week. I have in the past, uh, but I have not looked how we've done individually in those. Yeah, well, you, everybody knows we've been talking about my bookie uh, all season long and uh, add a little entertainment to the games. Uh, you know, we, mybookie.ag, if you're the kind of guy that likes to get after it uh, and bet the whole, the whole card, you can do parlays, you can do teasers, you can do all sorts of different things. 
Um, you know, you pick a three team where you turn a hundred bucks into 600 bucks. Like we've talked about the, the college football, a disappointing college football Saturday. I have to say, Dave, I, uh, I really enjoyed catching the end of Texas WVU, but Notre Dame Northwestern wasn't that interesting. And Alabama LSU was downright boring as it often has been, uh, as Alabama has shown clearly best team in the country, but you know, we, we do have big, big, uh, and, and by the Penn state, Michigan was awful. Uh, but we do have these big rivalry games as we turn into November here, as we get into the college football playoffs, uh, the playoff and bowl season. Uh, that gives a, a bunch of things to get on. And hey, you can get it on the Penguins and the Devils tonight. But we've been talking about it. We recommend these guys because we trust them. They've been in business for years. Great online reviews, mobile site, easy to use. And, uh, you know, if you're in the sidelines, time to get in the game. I'm not sure. Last Sunday was supposed to be the last day that they matched dollar for dollar the initial deposit uh, for $1,000, but we'll check into that and let you know on Wednesday if that's still there. But still, the place to go if you'd like to get after it. Use our promo code TERRIBLE. You play, you win, you get paid. And make sure you're hitting them up uh, at BetMyBookie on Twitter as well, too. Like David said, they, uh, they've they been giving away some free money. Uh, they respond to uh, to tweets on there as well, too. They're a lot more cordial on Twitter than I am uh, as well. <laughs> low bar. That is a low bar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, uh, back back to this thing. The You know, the thing I, I think that we haven't even hit on yet, and I've got to make sure we do, is kind of the, uh, first, the kind of the closing sequence uh, in, 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 in the first half there. Uh, you know, the third, what was it? The third and, oh, what was it? Uh, closing out the first half there. The third, the drop by Juju, when was that? Yeah, that was the that was the drive. It wasn't actually the last drive of the half. It was the drive before that because the Steelers stuffed the Ravens. That was a significant drop. That was a twenty, at least a twenty yard gain uh, across the seam. And how about look? You know, one of the things, Dave, as we flip to the offensive side of the ball, um, that both quarterbacks really use in the middle of the field a lot. And we've talked about you know Ben having trouble against zones sometime, and particularly the Baltimore zone and the deep drops of the linebackers not wanting to use the middle of the field. What we saw was the Ravens play a ton of man yesterday. We'll see when the All-22 comes out, you know, with that breakdown. But, you know, it was highlighted by the Ravens playing that press coverage at the line of scrimmage on big third downs and the fourth down and not being able to stop the Steelers on those quick slants or those crossing routes. You just can't trail it. I mean, if you've got to cover A, B, or Juju – you know, across the field for more than two, two, three seconds, that's just, it's virtually impossible. And, uh, you know, we saw, we saw it time and again, but, you know, the Steelers did, did use the middle of the field there for, for a lot of those throws. Well, I think both teams tried to blitz quite a bit and just was not, were not successful sending the numbers, uh, if you will. And Ben obviously was good at seeing it coming and, and picking it up uh, and hitting Juju and, and A.B. on a few of these throws. Uh, did a good job of dumping off uh, occasionally to uh, to James Conner on, on a few other pressures as well here as you know in in addition. But the second uh, you t- you want to talk about a play that really had me bothered there was uh, right after the two minute warning was at second and seven the Steelers were right at about midfield oh, 49 they're at their own 49 you're thinking okay we're gonna milk some clock here gonna go down they're gonna get the ball first in the second half here come out of this drive with some kind of uh, points here, and it's going to be really, really huge. Well, you come out at second and seven, and Ben, Ben, I mean, that was a great pass to Juju, and and he just flat out dropped it, you know, and and, uh, the third and seven play that followed, I think, was the one where Ben was flushed out of the pocket and uh, was uh, was James Washington on an underneath crosser that Ben threw kind of wide of the mark on that one, so all of a sudden... It's fourth and seven with 148 left, and you're punting, and you're thinking, man, where did all that momentum go right there? Because not only that, you know, you were milking some clock, and now you're going to give the Ravens the football back uh, with, with plenty of time. Now, luckily, the, the – the, uh, Okay, let me ask you a question on that sequence, because you were right about Washington coming in for Hunter, and, and I, Mike said uh, – you know, we heard it on the broadcast at least – until one of them separates, you're just going to alternate them. We'll see if they alternate them and, and go back to Hunter Thursday or – if they stay with Washington, he had a couple of catches. Were you surprised that he chose Washington on a on a, on a big down like that on a third and eight or whatever it was? Yeah, I was, but I think I had a lot to do with him being being pushed from the pocket, though. Yeah, yeah, okay, oh, good point. 
And, and, you know, we saw him throw the back shoulder throw to Washington. And, you know, we can talk about whether they have the chemistry yet or whether it was just a uh, not a great throw or Washington could, got held a little bit. But he tried to make that back th- th- shoulder throw to James, and, and obviously they didn't connect on that one. Right, and it seemed like early in the game it was those uh, seven-yard outs to, to Washington. I think the first three were, weren't they? Yeah, the uh, first one. First one on the right side, they didn't connect, and it wasn't a good throw to Ben. It was low, and it went. It went. It did go through Washington's hands. He did get his hands on it. Second one, he caught and then turned and ran it like a fullback for a couple yards before getting pushed out. And I think that was the third one, right? Uh, the third one was back over on the right hand side that got nine on that. Uh, uh, that ended up being their second scoring. I think that was in the second. Could ended up being their second touchdown because James Conner converted the third one, and then I think they went on down and, and finished that drive off. Look, they, I mean, he, he, you know, two catches for whatever it was, 19 yards or whatever it was, yeah, that's not going to cut it on, on five well, targets. Right, but, you know, at least he's getting the targets, and, and that's an improvement for him. So, I mean, you know, it's baby steps, he's not, right? It's not going to be it's not going to be all in one. It's not. He's not going to go seven for seven on Thursday night for ninety-eight yards. So at least, at least Ben feels comfortable enough to throw him the ball a few times. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, look, it is baby steps, but I mean, the second half of the season, he has what seven catches for I don't know sixty something. Y'all wrote it up last night. Seven, six catches for like seventy something yards uh, in the first half of the season. He needs he needs twenty catches in the second half of the season, if you ask me. Uh, 20, you know, 20, what, what's, uh, tw- let's say 21, uh, or, or no, let's say 20, what's 20 divided by eight, but two, two, two and a half. I mean, he, he, he can get that right. And you mix in about four, uh, four or five deep, deep receptions. You, you keep throwing in the, the deep receptions and, you know, d- certainly didn't, didn't even have a, I don't, Ben didn't throw a deep ball yesterday. Did he to, to anybody? Oh yeah, yeah, he yeah he threw a couple. I mean, look, uh, he threw a couple. He was uh, what was he? AB down the side once, but I, I mean I don't remember him. You know, re- you know the couple down the middle of the field, but I don't remember him taking some real shots deep. Do you, what am I? What, did I miss something? Not down the sideline. He not those patented uh, yeah. uh, deep. But now he did throw that, and I called this. I was one play off of it. That uh, when they, when they get around that forty or thirty yard line or whatnot, they like to run that slot. That slot fade, and he threw that slot fade into the end zone to AB down the left side. Remember, remember yeah, that? Yeah, that's one? the play I remember. Yep. Uh, that that was into the back of the end zone. That was good defensive coverage, and it ball bounced up into the stands. Yeah. Uh, right, and then he threw uh, opening uh, the third quarter. The well, that one got wiped out by a no play. Uh, the pass incomplete uh, deep to he threw. Another one deep. Oh, no, no. He threw uh, the, the back shoulder one to James Washington down the left side was considered a deep throw. Okay. So not, not a lot of not a lot of big home run shots. And anyway, I don't know. I mean, I didn't see Washington run a lot of patterns that were, were that. Well, again, we'll see on the all 22 what he was asked to do. But look, maybe that's with Weddle and Jefferson playing high on the safeties, um, maybe not coming down in the box as much. The opportunity wasn't there. We'll see if the Carolina plays a different scheme. You know, I'm, I'm sure they're not done taking shots. But – I'm not banking on James Washington getting a lot of, you know, 30 plus yard receptions in the second half of the season. Well, he he need, he needs to he needs to have five or six of them, I think. He really does. Uh he played 70 snaps in that game. 80 86% of the snaps he played in that game. So I'm willing to bet he did run some some uh some deep routes. We'll see what the all 22 says on that. Uh okay, we we covered the but what what about the whole debacle to close out the first half? The, the, the missed yeah, call, uh, yeah, the so, missed so, You know, 15, 20, you know, 30 seconds. I mean, I don't know what the number is, but for me, I my, my personal view has been I was a little surprised. You know, they were generally deep in their own territory, inside their own 20 on your 15-yard line. Uh, we, we see them. You know, it has been a patented play of, of Todd Haley, and we saw Fittner do it early in the season, is run a wraparound draw on first down so that it's conservative. You see if something breaks open for eight or ten yards, and then you can decide how you want to play it. My goodness, Ben was – I mean, I, I look, I don't care about the play calling. This is this stuff's on your veteran quarterback. You call a play, you call whether a screen or an out or whatever it is, or he's scrambling and making a throw to Vance. 
I mean, this is your veteran quarterback. Your most important thing there is don't turn the ball over. And Ben, um, you know, play after play after play, you felt like the Ravens had a chance to actually take the ball from the Steelers. So, I, again, I'm not putting this on Randy Feetner. You let your veteran quarterback make a decision, and if he has to throw it out of bounds or whatever, so be it. This is the, That was on Ben, in my, in my view. Well, you know, like, like I said, there's about four four throws in this game. A couple of them at the line of scrimmage there, maybe, or whatnot. I mean, there are about four throws in this game that I thought were going to get picked off. Uh, at least two of them probably should have been. Uh, and, and that whole sequence there to close out the uh, close out the first half, uh, of course, starting to look, Vance, we, you know, we knew right away Vance McDonald but, didn't. I mean, the ref, you couldn't miss a call worse than that. Now, I get not blowing the whistle, but, I mean, calling it an interception? Right. We, I mean, we, we, we knew that that was not a turnover there. And then you turn around, that incomplete short middle throw to James Conner got bounced up in the air, right? And that was one that was almost picked off that you're holding the breath on. Uh, then 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 you have James Conner right tackle for nine yards. And then Ben, uh, w- uh, on, uh, what was it, the, uh, the incomplete short middle to Vance, was that the one that Vance dropped? Yeah, that's the one, you know, he's running, he's running up the seam there and – you know, he had it against his leg. Look, we, you know, we've we've I think we have properly assessed Vance McDonald his time here. He is a beast with the ball in his hands. Uh, he's a weapon who can do you know can, who can get vertical. Uh, but he's going to drop some balls, and you know, we we well, he dropped one there that would have been you know he and Juju had big drops that would have been big gains in that game. Uh, yesterday. All right. Uh, enough. Uh, I was just ready to raise, my, throw my hands up and say, just kneel on the ball. Get yeah, the kneel on the ball. I think everybody <laughs> get or just, hand it to, hand, you know, hand it to the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> Just get the heck out of there now. Uh, that third quarter drive that was uh, to, to open up the second half. That was uh, that was a big boy drive. I mean, you go 15 plays, 75 yards. Uh, you know, kind of kind of the way they did. And I, I don't th- I don't you know uh, they they ran they obviously ran a few times earlier in that drive there, but a lot of Ben Roethlisberger uh, uh, in that in that drive as well too. And then Ben obviously with the quarterback sneak uh, to uh, to uh, to cap it off there. Uh, the Ravens come back down down and answer uh what i'm trying to get to here were, were you surprised at the quarterback sneak yeah i was right there at the goal line i was he said uh, yeah you know a, a b and a b and james Conner have a lot of touchdowns this season so i was i was very surprised to see him go in there and, and he clearly didn't get it on his first effort but connor and juju pushing from behind and DeCastro castro and, and pouncey pushing up front I mean, he, he clearly did get in at the end of the day. All right, now let's get to this fourth quarter uh, uh, play when uh, the Steelers started their own own 15. They, you know, they they uh, then you have the Antonio Brown push off pass interference. Uh, that was the right call there. And then on a second and 15, Ben scrambles to his right, uh, and 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 you know, that's when uh, that's when Zadarius Smith lands on top of him, and Ben almost died. <laughs> almost died. Thought I thought I was dead for a minute. Uh, and thank goodness he wasn't. Uh, but you know, let, let's get to uh, let's get to Joshua Dobbs coming into that game for one play, and and what a big big play that was. Uh, it's, I mean, in my mind, there's no doubt. Uh, obviously, in the Ben play, there's a holding penalty on uh, on uh, Ali Villanueva. Um, you, you know, the Steelers second and twenty at their five in a game where the score is twenty three thirteen, and at this point, a you're wondering, you know, look, it it was. I had said when he went down, I didn't really think, I, you know, Fouts was like, took all the weight on that right shoulder. It looked to me like he he got the wind knocked out of him. And I, I tweeted that at the time. I said, hard to tell. Maybe got the wind knocked out of him. Uh, he goes into the fetal position while he's lying down. But when he sat up and they actually pull him up a little bit by his arms, you know, if a guy has a right shoulder or arm injury, you don't use his right hand to help him move. Um, and, and they did that. So that kind of, you know, m- made it seem to me that it was just a, it wasn't significant, but you never know. And then he stand on the sideline and you say, okay, Dobbs is in there. Just let him hand the ball off once and, and get on to the next play and, and hope, you know, the, the Ravens field position isn't too good, whether Ben comes in for the third down play or not. I mean, a plus to Randy Feetner, a plus to Randy Feetner, a for having the confidence in the kid to make that play call, making the play call, and then obviously all the all the credit in the world goes to the guys who actually execute the play. And Dobbs did it. You guys had a great picture on SteelersDepot.com um, of what that looked like. He had an open receiver, and he put it where the open receiver could catch it. 
Standing, uh, standing in the end zone, uh, coming in cold off of off of the bench. Uh, a lot of people don't realize on that play too that that De Castro gives up kind of a late pressure. Uh, so there there's a guy kind of in you know kind of uh, closing in on Dobbs on that play too. Uh, hey, he hit the open guy and moved the chains. I mean, what what more? You know, take your hat off and hand it to him. What more can you ask for? And yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I know Ben and and look, I believe Ben at first. First, uh, during the post-game press conference, say, well, uh, you know, Dobbs audibled out of a run and all like that. Turns out, evidently, that that the play was what the play was the whole time. Uh, but, you know, prop, props to him because, you look, I mean, you have to think, too, and that's gutsy from the fact that you have to think if you're the Ravens, you have to think they're going to run a running play as well, too, right? I mean, you got a guy coming off the bench. They're deep in her own end. This guy's first of really official, if you will. I mean, he's had a couple of kneel downs, but his first really official play of his NFL career that, that counts, if you will. And, uh, uh, you know, he's dropping back, passing in the end zone. So good on him. Good on him. Good on everybody. I'll tell you, you know, it, it, what this means is, you know, we talked about this at the beginning of the offseason, uh, you know, wh- what the Steelers think of Mason Rudolph and, and how they're going to handle things. Um, don't expect to see Mason Rudolph dressed this year. I mean, Josh Dobbs comes in and does that. Uh, you know, you've not I, I know it's one play and whatever. But if there was a question about development and what's going on, Josh Dobbs has done enough to give the Steelers some level of confidence no matter what pre-draft grade you had on him as a fourth rounder or Rudolph as a third rounder or whatever, he's their backup quarterback. And, and uh, you know, we'll see in the offseason if that changes in, in terms of coming into, you know, going through mini camp, OTAs and minicamps next year. But, you know, I thought maybe out of the bye that if there was going to be a change that, that we'd see the change. There hasn't been a change. Josh Dobbs got called in to do something in one play. The Steelers had enough confidence in him to have him throw the ball out of his end zone. He's your backup quarterback. Yeah, let, let, let's be let's be clear. One play does not define <laughs> anything outside of it. it was a damn good play, and it gives you a little bit of confidence in him moving forward. And you're right. Yeah, I mean, that one play might have solidified Dobbs as being the number two the rest of the season. Now that you know, and now, and this, uh, now it's also going to have another section of the fan base throwing their hands up and saying, "Why the hell did you spend a third round draft pick on 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 Mason Rudolph now at this point?" Let, let me ask you: Is uh, is there any part of you now that maybe can, you know, if you got offered a a I don't know a second round pick for Dobbs or Rudolph, would you during the off season would you take it? I mean, we're way we're uh, it's way out there as far as a, a question and speculation goes, but you know, would, would, would you're never you're never going to get that low, that level of pick for one of those guys, but a fifth round pick or a sixth round pick, I guess maybe. I, I don't think I'd trade either one of those for the for that because you can you know look we remember a couple years ago we were talking about how Baltimore needed a drafted two quarterbacks every every year until they found one and all uh, I have or yeah. Our, our, yeah our Cleveland uh, uh, I have no issue with the Steelers having too many quarterbacks that might may or may not be good uh and hopefully we don't have to find out for a little while longer but yeah definitely uh look uh uh definitely a great play by Dobbs and make no mistake about it uh you converted a second and 20 from your own five and then you go down that drive ends up in a in a in a field goal to put you 10 points ahead that's uh that's that's pretty significant there in the fourth quarter that is pretty significant in the fourth quarter and Again, I, you know, I, I do think, you know, as much as I like John Harbaugh, I do think that, you know, there's some things you, you look at in this game and say, you know, what, what, you know, what were, what were they thinking some of these times? And, and the Ravers coming up playing press coverage um, against the Steelers and against Ben in some of those situations, um, playing press man and trying to blitz them and repeatedly getting burned. I mean, they, they could not get off the field on the big downs and the Steelers and Ben executed – you know what? Again, it wasn't Ben's best game. wasn't wasn't his worst game. Uh, I, he was good. And you look at the, you know, twenty eight of forty seven threw the ball a ton. We talk about Steelers losing when Ben throws the ball a ton. They got a win in this one. Uh, a seventy four QBR, which is pretty darn good. Eighty nine point eight passer rating. A little bit under what his season average has been, but but you know, solid enough. Um, there's going to need they're going to need better play from Ben. At you know in these bigger games, 
But, you know, again, some drops, it's going to happen every week, and some drops would have made that stat line look a lot better if Vance and Juju hold on to those balls and, and you know, add 50 yards to his passing line. Absolutely, and, you know, I think uh, you look back, and we talked about this earlier, you look at the, the, kind of the, the flip-flop and the third-down stats from the Week 4 game to the uh, to the uh, to to this week's game and, and and how really the the that that stat line for both teams was uh, flipped you know for, for that was a huge difference uh, th- this is a steer were you were you surprised about that stat uh, uh, I it didn't hit me until they went over at halftime the Steelers have never trailed at halftime this year uh, I'm shocked, but they did come back and tie both the the Chiefs and the and the Ravens in those games after getting down 21 nothing and 14 nothing. You know, so that that's kind of that that stat kind of snuck up on me, uh, if you will. Uh, they were in that game against the Ravens the first time around. They just could not get off the field uh, in the second half against that Ravens offense, and they gave up what they give up three or four field goals in the, uh, in the second half in that first meeting, uh, against the Ravens. Now, uh, we have seen a lot of ch- things change defensively for the Steelers in the last several weeks. You know, we, we talk about that, uh, that, uh, that newfangled dime defense with Fort and Burnett and, and Hilton, uh, in the game. I, I'm, I'm excited to go back and look at, I think in total, that was, 27 of 61 snaps. So they really only used the dime uh, prop personnel 44% of the time in that game. Now we know a couple of those times resulted in the uh, in the uh, explosive plays there. So I'm excited to go back and look at, at those on all 22 there moving forward. But make no mistake about it, David. We are going to see Thursday how they're able to handle a, a quarterback that's – that's uh, able to take off with the football. Are you going to play more Fort and Burnett in that game because of you have a more mobile quarterback, a guy not afraid to take off off with it in 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 in, in Cam Newton? That's one of the things that we need to watch moving forward uh, in into this week here. Uh, we already talked about what what are you going to do with your cornerbacks there? You know, in a short week, you know, do you keep things status quo with guys like Cody Sensabaugh and 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 Artie Burns there? Uh, Injury wise, this team seems to have come out of this game against the Ravens healthy, so that's a good sign. I have not had a chance to look at see how the Ravens came out of that uh, uh, game, but this game is at home for the Steelers. Uh, it is on a short week. That means a short week for the for the for the uh, uh, Panthers as well too. And the line supposedly, you know, the, the line surprisingly opened up with the Steelers minus seven. Now it has. Dipped a little bit, probably not surprisingly, because the Panthers come into this game six and two. But wh- where is your head right now, heading into this short week? I sure as hell would take seven. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that that sounds great. Look, I think this is they're six and two. They're a good team. Um, uh, concerned, concerned against good teams and 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 decent offenses. Look, McCaffrey's a dynamic guy. Um, think what you know, Samuel's uh, Steelers. Fans probably don't know a ton about uh, maybe you know they haven't followed the Panthers all that closely, uh, but they you know they know who McCaffrey is and they know who Greg Olson is and the Steelers have had trouble with tight ends and Olson made a spectacular touchdown catch in the game yesterday. He's a dynamite guy at, at tight end, even though a bit older. Uh, the receivers, you know, they got DJ Moore was the first round pick out of Maryland. They get Samuels. He's a he is a you know you saw him. He, he Dave he had the longest uh, yardage covered on a touchdown run this season even though his touchdown run was only 33 yards. He went 101 yards, according to next-gen next stats, on a 33-yard touchdown on an end, end around um, that scored yesterday. So uh, I'm nervous about this game. I, look, I'm going to be, if you're a Steeler fan, uh, how can you not be nervous um, against Cam, against Drew Brees, against Phillip Rivers, against Tom Brady? I mean, they've got four games in, in the balance of the schedule where, you know, elite quarterbacks and Steelers have not shown that they can slow down elite offenses. Now, Carolina might not be an elite offense, but they've been a very good offense for the last two weeks. So the, the, the jury's out. The big advantage for the Steelers, Thursday night at home. Thoughts on Ryan Switzer offensively in that game against the Ravens? I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, I, you know, I realize every time things don't go the way people want, when it gets the, you know, the third down pass out of the backfield where they don't connect, everybody wants to, you know, critique the Steelers on every play call, everything they do. Why isn't James Conner in there on a big drive? Why is it Jalen Samuels? 
you know, I, you do some different things. You work on things during the week. We saw uh, Switzer catch a third down ball. He's got, you know, even though he has two drops this year, very reliable hands, uh, great feet in tight spaces. I, I, I like how they're using him. I, and you know what? If, if and when, you know, we, we get this far without mentioning Le'Veon Bell, if Le'Veon Bell comes back, the guy who's going to lose playing time is a guy like Ryan Switzer, a guy like James Washington. I, I'm not sure, you know, James Conner's going to lose any time. All right, now here's the thing with Switzer, especially early in that game. I was thinking, man, there's the old Dre. He's got the Dre Archer helmet on with the flashing red light. Uh, here we here we go. Every time Switzer's on the field, it's it's a, it's a giveaway. I'll tell you something that kind of helped his cause. I think talking about Switzer uh, against the Ravens is when Juju had to leave the game for a little while. Switzer got some snaps in there uh, in 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 the slot, right? Yep. And, and didn't he make a, a big uh, – didn't he have like a, uh, a third down conversion down? Yeah, third down uh, – well, there, there was uh, we, there was we, one on the right sideline and then another one. Um, uh, not, not, not the, not the uh, kind of – no, this was uh, – uh, I'm trying to – I'm drawing – 13 yarder, the 13 yarder. Yeah, when, when was yeah. that? Uh, that was it. Okay, that was uh, – when was that? Was it eight yards? Yeah, I'm drawing the blank. No, it was. It was in the third quarter. It was, uh, it, yeah, it was the play after. It was two plays after Juju left, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was the third and six. That that conversion for 13 yards, I oh, think, that, I, yes. I, I really think helped his cause because it shows you that you can put him on the field in other situations. Well, I think it helped his cause maybe with fans. I think the Steelers know that they can do that. I mean, you know. I think look, he's not going to be he's not going to be the first option out of the slot ever. Uh, but if you need to go to him, you can. And Ben obviously has some level of comfort with him because he keeps going to him. My my biggest concern here, David, is try to if you're going if you want to use him like that, get him more on the field, get him on the field a little bit more, and don't get the ball in his hands. You know what I'm saying? Because it just becomes when I see number ten on that field. Uh, well, I think you mean out of the backfield more, though, right? I mean, it's been, it's no, been that I case mean, out of the Well, we'll have to didn't look at his. Didn't he play like last week? Didn't he play like 28 snaps last week or something? Yeah, we'll have to look at his total snap totals versus times, you know, t- touching the ball. It, j- it just has that feel to it at times during certain drives. I'll, I'll, Fair I'll, enough. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. And speaking of times, uh, how badly did John – again, I, I like Harbaugh, but, I mean, a lot of things in yesterday's game, if I were a Ravens fan, I'd be going nuts. How do you let the clock run with three timeouts and the Steelers having a third down uh, with 234 left and you let the clock run down to the two-minute warning? Oh, my goodness, that is just some bad clock management. It's, I mean, that, that's F-minus clock management. I mean, that's as bad as it gets. I mean, you cannot do that. you got to – you get that, you, you know, you call time out there with 2.30 to go. You force the Steelers to do, you know, are they going to put the ball in the air and risk the incomplete pass? You know, how are they going to handle that? And then you get the decision that you're all, still going to have the two-minute warning, so you, you get the benefit of that. It's just you, the trade-off there of a timeout for 34 seconds is such an incredibly bad decision. I can't believe it. And then a good decision by Ben Roethlisberger. I really felt the Steelers, you know, absolutely had to run the ball on that third and eleven where they had, you know, a minute 40 left after they got, got stopped on two running plays. Ben dropped back to pass. Uh, you know, I don't know if he was just disguising it beautifully, which he did. Um, it'd be interesting to see if he didn't have an open guy or he wanted a guy college open to make that throw. But uh, absolutely fine with the sack. Lose 10 yards to the 40-yard line. That's not crucial field position right there. Um, and, uh, and you know, we used up 10 seconds and – and uh, we're able to run off 50 seconds of clock to give the Ravens the ball with less than a minute left. That was crucial stuff at the end of the game in a seven-point game where the Steelers did it right and the Ravens did it as poorly as you could do it. That might be the single best sack of Ben Roethlisberger's career. Yeah, good, good call. Good, good. <laughs> for uh, for sure. Uh, Chris Boswell, what are you doing right now? Yeah, fourth missed extra point. I mean, obviously you're not going to cut him, but, I mean, with the, the – the, the standard is not the standard right now. You see, I know that's true, and that's a good point. But as you, you used the word earlier in the show, at the very beginning of the show, and I know it's not a strength of anybody who follows any team, patience. And Chris Boswell's the guy. He's proven to be a good kicker. He's had a little bit of a bad run, but after the missed extra point, came back and knocked that 29-yard field goal right down the middle. 
Uh, I still have a ton of confidence in Boswell. I'd ha- I have a ton more confidence than I'd have in, in anybody else they were going to bring in to kick the second half of the season. Will Bic- Will Chris Bo- Will Chris Boswell miss at least two more extra points this season? No. I'm going to say yes. With eight games left, he'll miss at least two more. I uh, I still don't think they're going to cut him, but I, I think there's a possibility of that happening. All right, that's a good one. Somebody might mark that one down for us to keep track of. Uh, true or false, the Steelers will win the division. Yeah, I think that's true now. Uh, you know, obviously the last game of the season might be a very interesting one at home against the Bengals because it looks like now it's a two-team race. Um, as the Steelers get the important win. So advantage Steelers. So, yeah, I'll take yes. I, and I put it at, at, at you know, 80, 80 percent. Will either Cincinnati or Baltimore make the playoffs? Baltimore's out. Uh, I think the Chargers are definitely in. And the Chargers might – right now the Chargers might be the best team in the AFC, in my opinion. So uh, the Texans look like they're in. I, you know, it's interesting. The Col- Look out for the Colts, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Look out for the uh, Indianapolis Colts. I'll say Baltimore, no chance. Bengals, 50% chance. Yeah, it's going to be – they got a big game. Well, look, Cincinnati comes out of their bye week and they get New Orleans. How would you like that? Uh, and, no, and then they get the Ravens. And then they get the Ravens. And, and what about all this new – we haven't even discussed. What about all this news about A.J. Green? I mean, he – I missed it. What? what he, which was he's, he's got foot or toe problems or something like that, and might miss a couple games coming up here. Well, so they lose to you know they're they're likely to lose to New Orleans. So and then they go at Baltimore with Baltimore's you know, clearly Baltimore season on the line. But you could then argue at five and four maybe the Bengals season's on the line. Uh, so that game's going to be monstrously big. AJ AJ Green of Cincinnati likely out some games with injured toe. <laughs> yeah, they're in trouble. Give me the give me the Colts. I mean, they, and and look, I mean, they lost the Broncos yesterday. They could, you know, could have at least put themselves in the picture with the last second field goal, and they, you know, they're probably done now. We we talked about how Cincinnati could, could probably uh, take. Somebody's got to win the Cincinnati Baltimore game, so that that could end up being a huge. Uh, the loser of that game might be done, right? I mean, for sure. Uh, yeah, well, well, right, because I say, look, Baltimore's. Could be could be four and six, and the Bengals after losing to the Saints could be five and five. So you're in trouble. All right, uh, Saints Rams game yesterday. What did you think about that? Loved it, loved it. I mean, look, I like you know there were there were plays made on both sides of the ball. It wasn't just offensive football. It was a really nice comeback by the Rams. Uh, man, you want I don't want to play the Saints ever, but the Steelers are going to play them December 23rd. I might actually be at that game, Dave, in the in the Superdome, and that. You know, they're, they're a fun. Look, those are both fun teams to watch. If you like uh, talented, skilled players, and and I love the way they use that. They use that kid Tayshon Hill, uh, the the backup quarterback, and do the different things. Um, and Gurley's Gurley's the best back in the NFL. I don't, you know, I won't say it's not close, but he's the best back in the NFL. It, uh, fun, fun game to watch. Give me a quick thought on both the Patriots and the Packers. Neither as good as people talk about. I mean, I, I don't think the Packers are that good, not, you know. But the Patriots are always there at the end. Josh Gordon doing some good things, uh, but you know, to me right now, I, I, honestly, I think the Chargers might be today the best team in the NFL with the Chiefs right there with them. I'll give the Patriots third, and then ask me after the Carolina game if the Steelers should be in that conversation. All right, uh, we'll get back after it on Wednesday. Hopefully have a Panthers beat writer to help us break it down. Of course, the game's on Thursday. Mike Tomlin meets the media at noon here in just a little bit. Uh, quick, uh, quick, quick week here for us. So uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Steelers Depot. Follow David Todd on Twitter at David M. Todd. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do, want to donate to the cause, go to SteelersDepot.com. Hit that donate button up right navigational bar. Uh, if you want a uh, ad free version of SteelersDepot.com, go to SteelersDepot.com. Hit ad free to upper right navigational bar. And once again, David and I will be back on Wednesday. Have a good day. Yeah, that was a fun one. As always, Thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Dave.